today we will be looking at the specimen of the kidney now as we all know that the kidneys they are a pair of excretory organs which are present on the posterior abdominal wall by the sides of the vertebral column at a position of T12 up till L3 these kidneys they excrete nitrogenous waste from our body apart from excretion of the nitrogenous waste the kidney also produces renin which is required for maintaining the blood pressure it secretes erythropoietin which re which is required for the maturation of the rbc's and also the 125 dihydroxycholecalciferol which is required for the calcium metabolism now here i have taken out a different specimen from a different cadaver just to show you the first thing that we have to understand is how to identify which side this kidney belongs to so in order to identify that we have to understand that the kidney consists of two poles we have an upper pole and a lower pole the upper pole of the kidney is rounded in shape and a little bit towards the medial side that is approximately 2.25 approximately 2.5 centimeters from the midline of the body the kidney has a lower pole which is quite blunt in shape and is present on the lateral side approximately 7.5 centimeters from the midline so if I hold it in this way so this kidney the upper pole is quite towards the midline and the lower pole is directed laterally side. The second thing is the kidney consists of two surfaces. We have the anterior surface and we have a posterior surface. Usually the posterior surface is flat whereas the anterior surface is not flat. It is quite rounded. It consists of two borders. So we have the lateral border which is convex in nature and we have a medial border which is convex on the upper and the lower part and it is concave on the middle part now on the concave section on the middle border you can see the presence of a structure this area is known as the hilum the hilum of the kidney so the best way to identify which side the kidney belongs is to identify the structure present in the hilum so the structures present in the hilum are the most anterior structure is the vein this is the renal vein then we have the renal artery and then we have the renal pelvis so renal vein renal artery and the renal pelvis so if we take all the points into consideration this kidney belongs to the right side this is the upper end which is directed medially this is the lower end which is blunt the anterior surface the posterior surface the lateral border and the medial border Okay, so this belongs to the right side now the upper pole of the kidney is usually related to the respective suprarenal gland on this cadaver we can see here this kidney we have the adjacent suprarenal gland present on the upper pole the relations that we see on the kidneys are the same for the posterior surface on both the kidneys so from the posterior surface the relation on the posterior surface is divided into two parts the upper part and the lower part the upper part of the posterior surface has the medial arcuate ligament the lateral arcuate ligament and the diaphragm along with this we also have the 11th and 12th ribs as in the case of the left kidney and only the 12th rib as in the case of the right kidney we know that the right kidney is present a little bit lower as compared to the left kidney because of the presence of the liver the liver is going to push the right kidney a little bit downwards this is the reason why the right kidney is a little bit lower as compared to the left kidney so the upper part of the relations we will have the medial arcuate ligament the lateral arcuate ligament and the diaphragm along with the respective ribs that is 11 and 12 in case of the left and the only the 12 in case of the right the relation on the lower portion of the posterior surface are on the medial part we are going to have the source major muscle followed by the quadratus lumborum muscle and then the transversus abdominis muscle 
the sauce major muscle covered by the sauce or the ilio sauce fascia the quadratus lumborum covered by the anterior layer of the thoracolumbar fascia and the transversus abdominis covered by the fascia transversalis deep to the anterior layer of the thoracolumbar fascia and the quadratus lumborum we will also have three nerves emerging out of the middle part we will have the subcostal vessels and the nerve on the upper part the iliohypogastric on the middle section and the ilioinguinal nerve on the lower part so these are the relations on the posterior part of the kidneys which is same for both the sides the anterior surface the relation on the anterior surface is different for both the kidneys because we have different structures on the right as well as the left so since this is the left this is the since this is the right side the right side, the upper section of the right side is going to be related with its corresponding suprarenal gland the middle part of the lower part the middle part is going to be related with the second part of the duodenum the lateral surface is going to be related to the hepatic area or the liver in the lower part the outer section will be related to the colic area and on the middle side we will be having the jejunal area these are the anterior relations of the right side whereas on the left side if you see over here the upper area is going to be related with its corresponding suprarenal gland the lateral part will be related to the splenic area the middle section will be related to the gastric part this area is going to be related to the pancreatic part the lateral part over here is going to be related to the colic area and the middle area is going to be related to the jejunal area okay so this is about the external features of the kidneys now if we look on the inner surface i have the inner surface of the kidneys the inner surface of the kidney is divided into two parts we have the renal area and we have the renal sinus the space that you can see over here this is the renal sinus the renal section or the renal part is again divided into two parts the outer area is going to be known as the cortex and the inner area will be known as the medulla now if you see over here in the medulla the medulla consists of approximately 10 to 15 pyramidal shaped structures which are known as the renal pyramids this renal pyramid consists of a base which is pointing towards the cortex and an apex which is towards the lower side this apex will have the opening of the ducts of bellini which are going to go downwards which will be received by the minor calyx present over here the minor calyx will in turn the minor calyx of all the areas in turn will go downwards there are approximately 7 to 15 minor calyx present over here which are going to go again and will merge forming the major calyx we have three major calyx which will ultimately form the ureter as you can see over here okay the cortex consists of two parts we have a renal column and the cortical arches the space between two pyramids is known as the renal column and the space present right above the pyramid will be known as the cortical arch so a pyramid along with the cortical arch this whole part is going to be known as a lobe of the kidney okay this is the lobe of the kidney now here we can see the presence of sinus these spaces these are known as the renal sinus afterwards the renal pelvis is going to come out of here so this is a brief demonstration of the kidney the detailed lecture of the kidney has already been taught and i will put the link in the description box